Well, after that field trip, um, of course, uh, we wouldn't come home without anything um, getting our hands on. So today what we did uh, was we got a Calathea uh, called Calathea Zebrina. And uh, it's been one of the ones that I like and we like because of the foliage and the color and the pattern on the foliage. The reason why we went and got us some Zebrinas is because the original one that we got, and this was about eight months old, little did we know and little did I know that this is the most finicky, the most sensitive, and the most demanding among all the Calathias. And I guess, you know, it's making us work, make us work for our money and make us um, really care for it and get it our money's worth because look at that foliage. I mean, the pattern on Calathias have been so unique that having one, a big one in the home is, is nice to have. And again, it's another refreshing spot to look at in the dead of winter, in the bleakest months of winter. So the first one, the first plant that we got, this by the way is the new one, uh, that I've repot and I'll, I'll explain to you just a little bit of what I know on how to care for it, how to plant it and how to put it in a pot in the home. But this is an eight month old Calathea that over time developed and many of you guys have known this, uh, those who own Calatheas, you know how sensitive they are and how over time if not cared for well, they will have all these yellowing along the edges, along the edges of the leaf. Now there are, there are many causes for this. Um, either we're using we're not using the right water, and that would be one of the things that we will talk about: the water requirements and the type of water that it likes drinking. Um, also, the humidity, the level of humidity in in the home and the spot inside the home where they are located, they are quite sensitive to that and they're very responsive to what type of humidity we provide them. And also the type of potting soil uh, that they are buried in and planted in. So, oh, and light requirements also. Now, in terms of uh, uh, water, what they want, and from all the reading that I uh, studied on and, and all the people that I've learned from, they do require, they never water them with faucet water. Faucet water has a lot of minerals and chemicals, uh, chlorine and, and, you know, I'm not a water expert, but there's a lot of uh, purifying uh, substances in the water to make it potable for all of us that they don't like that. And, and if we give them faucet water, that's one sign. It will start showing that it doesn't like it through the edges of the leaves. Another thing that is good for the Calathias is uh, low light. Um, this happens to like, um, it requires indirect medium light. And that's what we've been putting them in um, ever since. But the uh, kiss of death, if you will, that we are giving this is uh, the bad water that we thought we could use in the beginning. Uh, has been quarantined and isolated and removed from all the other Calathias just until it recovers. Now, at this point, the leaves of this Calathia have recovered, I'd say about 25% because it used to be very yellow, very brown, and, and you'd think that they would almost die. Uh, but it's, it's hanging in there and it's trying its best to get better. So um, we put this in order for it to get constant humidity we place this in the bathtub or in the bathroom uh, so that yeah, the humidity is constant and temperature is fine. With all the humidity that we use, um, it is getting what it needs to get at this point. Um, because of the humidity, it's developing that natural patina along the terracotta. And me personally, I like that. And so we talked about its light requirements, its water requirements, the humidity requirement. Let's talk about the soil. Now, the soil has to be loose, it needs to be free draining, it needs to have a lot of perlite as you can see with all those white um, substances that are already mixed into the soil. Another thing that we need to keep in mind is how we fertilize it. We use a half a dose of all-purpose organic uh, fertilizer for all of our in indoor plants. We, we put them on a schedule 
and when they're on the schedule we know exactly when to water what to water them with and what type of fertilizer uh, we need to use for it we personally use the Espoma um, brand of all-purpose fertilizer at half a dose uh, especially during the winter months November December uh, January February we don't want to have them uh, really put out too much energy by um, feeding them too much and so even at half a dose we would we would sometimes feed them every two weeks uh, once in two weeks and that's what's going to keep them alive and healthy during the dormant season now that's the old original Zabrina that we have we bought from and we took home from the Raleigh farmers market this Zabrina now it's the same Zabrina as the one that I showed you but what I did here is we have this antique uh, compote vessel I planted it in a plastic bowl that I got from the Korean fast food chain uh, perfect enough and in good size enough that it will fit the inside of uh, the spot but this Zabrina is two plants in one we only got this for $3.99 each free plastic pot already from the um, takeaway that we had planted it in here using uh, free draining potting soil you could also use for some reason I've also used in the past um, uh, a cactus mix and, and we know that that's highly friable and there's a lot of air in that soil I even added in more perlite and, and it works pretty okay for these types of house plants so this is I would say our plant of the week because I post every week and uh, now that winter is coming I, I wanted to showcase one plant a week this will be our debut plant of the week the Calathea Zebrina came from the Raleigh farmers market here in North Carolina I hope you like what we're showing uh, to you and what we're trying to share um, as constantly as we can there's a lot coming up as I always say um, content just fills up a home and the garden and the property and we wanted to share what we are learning we wanted to share what we already know uh, to folks out there who've been kind enough to give us good comments and good suggestions and um, who've emailed me and private messaged me even um, many times over asking for tips about their plants and uh, the planting composition in their landscape so all you all I really appreciate your trust um, we intend on growing this channel and we intend to be your source of inspiration and source of good energy uh, especially during these times so that's it for me right now this is Louie coming from Acorn Hill and we'll see you back here keep safe out there bye bye